Hello and welcome. We start with the developments in Western Africa's Sahel region as Burkina Faso sees a surge in armed attacks. Reports say dozens of Russian military instructors have arrived in the country to help it fight the insurgency. Though there has been no official confirmation, sources close to the government have informed of the development. According to reports, two rotations of planes came from neighboring Mali carrying Russian military instructors. Now, Russian instructor is a term used for former fighters from Russia's Wagner mercenary group. The paramilitary has now been regrouped under a new body called the Africa Corps. This rebranding was done by the Russian Defense Ministry after the death of Wagner Group Chief Yegevni Prigozhin in a plane crash in August last year. Russia's Africa Corps has been able to make inroads in West Africa as the military governments have forged better ties with Moscow. Burkina Faso, along with other neighboring junta-ruled states such as Niger and uh, Mali, have signed a security pact with Russia. Now, the pact mandates that all the nations to come to the aid of each other in case of any rebellion or external aggression. Earlier this month, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov visited Burkina Faso. He pledged that Moscow will deploy more military personnel and instructors in the country. He also said that Russia will supply more weapons to the military junta. The Russian military instructors are working here and their number will increase. At the same time, we provide training to the representatives of Burkina Faso Armed Forces and law enforcement agencies in the Russian Federation. So this area of our partnership is very specific and very much advanced. Burkina Faso, along with neighboring Mali and Niger, is witnessing an uptick in Islamist violence. For over a decade, Islamist insurgencies have killed thousands and displaced over two million in Burkina Faso. Just days ago, a group linked to al-Qaeda claimed responsibility for an attack that killed over 100 Burkina Faso soldiers last week. Now, the military government that took charge, citing failures of the previous government to tackle the crisis, controls just over half of the country's territory. The rest is controlled by armed groups. Long-standing efforts by regional and foreign powers have not been able to contain these attacks. Amidst France's failed counter-terror efforts and a rising anti-colonial sentiment, the three Sahel nations have pushed out French troops, and they are now turning to Russia as their new partner to tackle these security challenges. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by advocate Sipo Mantula, who is a researcher at the TM African School of Public and International Affairs, who is joining us live from Johannesburg. Welcome to First Post. Thank you very much, and uh, greetings to your viewers. Now, Professor, what role does the African Corps play in filling the security vacuum in the Sahel region, as we have seen the withdrawal of French co contingents from the Sahel? Uh, when you look at the role of most of what we call the paramilitary groups, uh, like you have said on your intro, that the, re the rebranding and the repositioning of the paramilitary group of Russia to Africa Corps this is a word that was used uh, in the early 1980s also, or <clears throat> you can say in the world, in fact, World War II, uh, it was a German term that was used. It, it, it is the same like also when you look at uh, Wagner Group when it was formed, that most of these groups, <clears throat> they have been formed in terms of military terms, but also their role being to play uh, support to the governments uh, in terms of security, in terms of uh, setting up a military basis, but also to tackle what you, you have said also earlier, insurgency, violent uh, extremism. <clears throat> so if you look at the Africa Corps of Russia, it is one way of also trying to assist the Sahel region. The same role that was played by the G5 Sahel. Remember there was a G5 Sahel that was under France 
that was managing that belt of Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Central African Republic and Chad. So that area in e itself is managed mm. by what we will always call the mercenaries or the dogs of war. Yeah. Talk to us about the significance of this security pact between Russia, Burkina Faso, Niger and Mali. You know, my sister, one has to date back, but if you take them individual, you look Burkina Faso's relationship with uh, the Soviets and with Russia now under the Federation of Russian government. It dates back to the 80s. But when you look also from 2022 with <clears throat> Africa-Russia summit, these three countries were also strategic to the Russian foreign policy. Hence, even last year, uh, the, uh, if one looks at the numbers that were there from the previous Africa-Russia summit, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali were part of that summit. And that's where this pact and this relation with Russia becomes strengthened. And also what we call shuttle diplomacy visit by the foreign affairs minister of Russia, Lavarov, to, to the Sahel, is to strengthen and to boost what we have said that the moving out of Paris or France out of the Sahel, it gives Russia also a leeway to start to strengthen its di diplomatic, military, and economic corporations with the Sahel region. As you can see, we might talk of military pact, but mm -hmm. there is something deeper in that military pact. It also includes cultural and diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the implications of Russia's involvement in Burkina Faso? In terms of regional dynamics, you have touched on it, and global geopolitics. One can look that Russia is also coincidentally hosting the BRICS summit. Uh, hosting the BRICS summit being the, uh, the, the 11th BRICS summit that will be in Moscow. It is moving towards the global south in terms of its relation. The conflict of Russia and Ukraine also is another distraction or a positive uh, 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 excuse by Russia now to start to focus on the geopolitics of the Sahel. And secondly, also, if you look at how Russia it is looking that most of these member states at the UN General Assembly, they've been in solidarity with Russia. And secondly, on the geopolitics of food security, mm -hmm. Russia has also provided what it has promised in the Africa-Russia summit in most of these African countries. So in terms of the geopolitics, one can say Russia is playing a role where it's filling that vacuum, that gap of France moving out of Niger military base, France moving out of uh, Mali military base, as well as in Ouagadougou. So Russia is playing what I would call a, a alliance of military, diplomatic, as well as economic diplomacy in dealing with the Sahel, and it also interrupting the foreign policy of the global north, and at the same time strengthening the global south. Hence, as I said to you, the peace and security architect mm -hmm. of BRICS will also focus on the Sahel region, because this is one of the regions that have been going through violent extremism, poor governance, and issues around economic uh, growth that is not actually benefiting the people of the Sahel region. Absolutely. Advocate Sipo Mantula, thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa. Thank you very much. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post. <laughs>